Hey guys and welcome to another video. The grind has been real for the past two weeks as I finally bit the bullet and implemented the last big remaining feature into my engine that I desperately needed to actually make my game, an animation system. So a lot of people have asked for a video that explored a little bit more of my game engine and well, ask and ye shall receive. Because I figured this devlog was going to be way too long to fit into a single video, I decided to split it up into two parts. In this part I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a look into Orbis, my game engine. I'm going to show you guys what creating a new project looks like in the engine. And then after that, in the next part, which will be the actual devlog video, I'll be going over the animation system that I've been working on. So that being said, let's start with the core ideas behind the engine. Or as the intellectuals would say, the philosophies. There are really two main concepts here that I keep in mind when I'm adding stuff to the engine. The first one being, you only use what you want to use. And I'll go a little bit more into detail on this in a minute. And the second one I kind of borrowed from the MVP himself, the creator of C++, Bjorn Stroustro. Yeah, and I'm not pronouncing that again. Namely, you don't pay for what you don't use. So one thing that's always kind of bugged me about really every publicly available engine that I've seen so far is that they insist on throwing way too much stuff at you that you just can't get around. For example, if you start a blank project in Unity or Unreal, the editor opens up and it gives you a level or scene in Unity's case. And then you can start dragging boxes in and stuff. Okay, that's really cool. But what if I want to make like a Flappy Bird or a Pong? Like, what if I just want to draw a few sprites? I don't need something as heavyweight as a level for that, especially not a 3D level. And it doesn't stop there, of course, because at that point you have to start creating game objects and actors and pawns and all of this stuff. And all I want to do is I just want to draw a sprite. So I stumbled upon a video recently, I'll link it in the description. It's called From Int Main to Begin Play, which basically explains all of the stuff that happens when you start up the most bare bones Unreal Engine project. And you'll see there's so much stuff going on that you may or may not need, but it's there anyway. So my approach is a little bit different and admittedly maybe a little bit less artist friendly. So let's take a look. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys what goes into creating a new Orbis project. So you'll see it's not as straightforward as creating a new Unreal or Unity project, but it's not that difficult either. So basically the first thing you do is you uh, either start a new Git repository or we're just going to create a new folder in this case. I'm going to call it YouTube Demo. There you go. And once we're in that folder, we're going to simply clone the engine. And I'll cut this part out because it's probably going to take a while. And once we're done cloning, we'll go inside the Orbis engine folder. There we go. And then there you'll find an install third party folder. Basically what this does is it downloads all the third party libraries, which are referenced as sub modules and then compiles them and installs everything in the correct location, stuff like that. For the web developers among you, this is basically the equivalent of an NPM install. So let's go ahead and do that. Install third party. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to clone all the submodules. Uh, once it's done cloning all the submodules, it'll give me an error actually because I forgot to pass any arguments to the script. So I actually have to pass a platform to this script. Here you can see all the options. Um, so for now, I'll just pass Windows x86. And then as you can see, it's going to start compiling all of these libraries. All of the libraries I'm using are basically using CMake. So it's actually very easy to do this. If you're wondering how I did this, I basically have this third party folder where all the submodules are and then I have a modules.js which is basically a list of all these folders that you can see and any CMake arguments that are used to build whatever is in that folder. You can see the ones that don't use CMake have sort of a different install method. This is just copy source, which basically means just copy some include files to a correct folder and stuff. These are basically like super small header only libraries or libraries that have like one CPP file and one header file that are not really worth compiling into a binary. All of the other ones are compiled into static li libraries wherever possible. And I think OpenAL is the only one that is compiled into a dynamic library because it's required by the license. All right, so after a while, while every dependency has been compiled, if we take a look into here, third party, there's now this install folder, which has all these libraries here that we need. So these are all actually built from source. I prefer it this way. When you clone the engine, there are no DLLs that get pulled. Everything gets recompiled from source, which is the cleanest way of doing things, in my opinion. It also makes it very easy to upgrade libraries. You just update the sub module. So once we're done with that, we can actually create our project. So for this, there's another script 
file called init project so we'll run that and then we'll see we are getting missing arguments again but it'll tell us what we have to supply it with so target is basically the name of the executable so i'll call it youtube demo and then the package name is like a domain name but reversed if you guys have ever written like an android app or a java app you'll know what this is so i'll call it com.example.demo and then the rest is kind of optional so i'll skip that as you can see that went pretty fast now if we jump outside of this orbis engine folder you'll see that there's a whole bunch of folders that have been created there's a source folder here which contains some initial source files okay so but how do we actually go about actually opening this in visual studio for example so this works similarly to an engine like unreal you basically have to use these two regen scripts to generate solution files so i'll go ahead and run the regen file you can also just double click it and as you can see this is cmake based and once that runs um we'll get a new folder called project here uh if we jump into it we have our visual studio file so we can open it okay once we're here in visual studio we can actually just build it and it should work so while it's compiling, I guess I'll start explaining a few things. You'll get these two folders here. First one's gonna be the name of your project, which is gonna contain three files. Let's start with this game class first. So this is basically your game instance class. It has a bunch of lifecycle functions, such as on update, on pause, on resume. As you can see, if you're starting a blank project, you pretty much get nothing. Like if you run this right here. Okay, we're gonna set this as startup project. There we go. We will literally get a black window. Basically, an empty project is nothing more than a bunch of lifecycle functions. Basically, something like what SDL would give you. All that's really happening here is the color is being cleared. If we set this to red, we compile. See the background's red. So if you wanted to create something like Pong, uh, you could use simple fixed render. This is a uh, kind of an easy, immediate mode-ish type of deal where you can just do like the old style rendering, like, I don't know, draw a quad or something. This is actually a deprecated class, so I don't know why I'm showing this. I have to like refactor this into multiple things because it's way too bloated right now. So let's draw a quad, for example. We'll just do set color. I don't know, colors blue. I don't know, we'll do this. 100, 100, 200, and we we're not going to be using a texture. And then if we compile, we get a blue quad on a red background. Perfect. So obviously this is not how regular drawing is done in the engine. This is this class is really only used for debug purposes, or I guess you could use it for a very simple like Pong games or Flappy Bird, it wouldn't really matter. As you can see, the start of this is way more bare bones than something you'd get with Unity or Unreal. Like if we put a breakpoint here and run it, you'll see that the call stack is actually, it's very short. So then where you go from here is really up to you. You could start using engine features to start creating more complicated stuff, or you could simply continue like this and just draw random sprites if you want. But let's actually do something interesting here. So what we'll do is, uh, I'm just gonna include this here. I'm gonna include a scene and a renderer. Okay, we'll add a renderer and a scene to our game. Now all we have to do is render, render, scene. And we also need a camera, of course, I forgot about that. Let's add a camera as well. I'm just gonna include everything here in the header just for simplicity's sake. Add that here. And there we go, we have a scene that's being rendered. Obviously nothing's gonna show up because there's nothing in the scene, but... So let's actually add something to the scene now. So for this, I'm gonna be using a visual. I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, demo visual. So what we'll do now is we will load a visual resource and then once we load in the resource we can create a demo visual from it like this and then we can actually dispose the visual resource right away so as you can see we have this sort of convention in the engine of uh, creating stuff with like create factory methods and then disposing it using a dispose function that's because all of these things are what's called resources. They're kind of similar to, I guess, like a U object or whatever, but they're not garbage collected. They use a sort of internal reference count tracking system. So if I dispose it here, it won't actually be disposed till this demo visual has stopped using it. Also, all of this is asynchronous. So the main thread is not gonna block and wait for this to load. It's just gonna continue instantly. I can create a visual instantly. Doesn't matter if it's not loaded yet. Everything's taken care of behind the scenes. 
And then finally, we will add that visual to the actual scene and we'll just set it as the scene root. So normally what you would do is you would set your level as the scene root. But now, because for demonstration purposes, we're just going to use this as the scene root. And of course, I haven't really told you guys what this file is because I haven't really made it yet. So I'm just going to grab a visual from a different project real quick. Okay, so I've actually just grabbed the player visual from my uh, main game. I'm just going to rename it demo.fizz. Let's move our camera back a bit. Aha, there we go. We have a very distorted looking uh, character and that is because we have not set the resolution. Set viewport size. I'm just gonna hard code it. There we go, there we have it. We have a visual. As you can see, we've only really added 10 lines of code in order to be able to render something on screen that is more complicated than just a quad. So you really have the freedom here of what you want to do and that's kind of the core idea behind the engine like do with it what you want to do the engine's not going to get in your way it's just going to offer you stuff you're free to not use it or you are free to use it do whatever you want so in the next part i'm going to show you the the editor so as you can see there's actually two regen scripts here we'll run this editor one real quick which will generate a second project an editor project and let's open that up. So as you can see, uh, the editor is actually a cute creator project. Um, this is the only ID that's supported for the editor. For the main project, you can actually choose, you can pass a, an argument to the CMake, and we should be able to build it just like that as well. So once it's built, we can run it. And as you can see, it still uses the old logo. So here we have the editor of a blank project. And as you can see, if we hit the play button here, we can actually run the game inside of our editor here, which is very cool. But let's not do that right now. Close this right now. And we are going to open a this demo visual. And as you can see, this, we got our model over here. Uh, we can add some, let's add some point lights to it. I don't know. There we go, let's make it green. Let's save that and if we go ahead and hit play again, we'll see that the light has changed. So you're really free whether you use the editor or whether you use the standalone tool. Some games will simply not require this editor. Like if you don't want to use any of this visual stuff or level stuff, you are free to just disregard this whole thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it probably wasn't for everyone, but I still kind of wanted to make it because I know there's some of you who are really interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, the actual devlog video should go up uh, sometime later this week. I don't know, I still have to edit it. You know, at this point, as I'm recording this, I haven't even edited this video yet, so we'll see how long that takes. But as always, subscribe if you liked the video, or leave a comment below. And thank you very much for watching.